Hello, my dear. I am very happy to see you again. I want to talk about another woman's hypostasis. A guardian of her inner state first of all. When can we protect our families and friends? When can we create a cozy, festive atmosphere? Joy in our homes, in our families. Only when we are full of energy. When we are excited, when our eyes shine. And when we radiate confidence in female power. But unfortunately, 90% of the world's population is now suffering from what doctors would call incurable conditions. They are melancholy and depression. This is when you think the world is absolutely gray, absolutely depressing. You feel discouraged. And there is no joy in this life. My dear, it is only in your thoughts. I'll reveal a very important secret today. If, all of a sudden, you're in a strange state of mind, for example, uncertainty, fear, or maybe anger, irritation or sadness, you should know that it's not yours. Let me show you who's responsible for what's happening to you. There are guilty parties in this case. These are the creatures of the subtle world. I'm lucky to be gifted by God. I can see the subtle world. I can see the essences. I can see the spirits of traumas that, during stressful situations, provoke a state that makes a person think his life has collapsed. My dear, it is not like this. When I walk around the city, I face this situation very often. People walk, and the spirits of injuries cling to them. It can be the trauma spirit of insult, or it can be the trauma spirit of disappointment. It is no longer the man walking alone. These creatures feed on him. Can you imagine how much energy we give to these creatures? It's horrible, and we have to change something urgently. Remember, if something goes wrong in your life, it means there is a spirit of trauma, taking all your personal power, somewhere inside your aura. It dictates very strange thoughts to you. A student of mine turned to me a few months ago. She came running into the class and said, Oh, my God. My friend wants to kill herself. Please save her. I didn't even know the language this girl spoke. I just started communicating with that evil spirit that provoked her, the one that made her stand on a windowsill on the 9th floor. There she stood, talking to me on the phone. And I could hear this spirit telling her, don't believe her. Don't believe her. And it was pushing her to the edge. I have the ability to see and negotiate with these spirits. In some cases, by using trickery, in other cases, by using deception. In some cases, using the magical power that's inside me. I cast them out of your life once and for all. I managed to get that spirit out of her. And, at some point, the girl realized she was standing on a windowsill. She thought, my God. How could I do that? Tears were rolling down her cheeks because she realized it was not her decision. Thank God that spirit of trauma had retreated and left her life. She's a madly talented girl. She's entered a new phase in her life. What would have happened if her friend hadn't come to me in time? What would have happened if I hadn't been there the second? What terrible consequences would there have been? My dear. The whole subtle world is filled with these spirits. It is up to us whether we let them into our lives or not. 
There are special energy practices for this purpose, which allow us to keep not only our physical body, but also our energy body in a state of spiritual purity. There are special rituals for our subtle body and for our aura, which allow us to remove these spirits of trauma from our lives. Have a look here, please. This is an ordinary person who feels that there is no light in life, that everything is bad. There are problems at work, there are problems in the family. That's how the spirits of trauma begin to penetrate your aura. When we perform energy techniques, the ones we are going to use today, there happens a very strong purification. These spirits of trauma simply fly away in different directions, and your aura becomes so dense, strong, and powerful, that no spirit is able to penetrate it. Every trauma leaves a mark in your aura. For example, you came to work, and your boss cussed you very rudely. Not because he's a bad person, but because he may have some kind of stressful situation of his own at home. He might have health problems, and he doesn't know how to deal with them. He just yelled at you, and the spirit of trauma appeared. You took offense or got angry with him. You had a very strong energy breakdown in you at that moment. You let the spirit of trauma inside you. It starts living in your aura. A person may have several spirits of trauma, 3, 5, 10, and some people even have 20. Sometimes, when people come to me, I see their aura is simply overpopulated by these spirits. We can deal with one or two on our own. But if it is the spirit of trauma which came to us through our lineage, then no. Some spirits have already been living in our lineage for more than one generation. For two, three, five, or maybe ten generations. My help is very important in this case. I have a unique ability. I can see the spirit of trauma, find its projection in the body, and banish it once and for all from your life. You may have been suffering for years, but only one action of mine, and these spirits will simply leave you once and for all. My dear, today, I am going to teach you how to protect yourself from the spirits of trauma that appear in you every day on your own. These are stressful situations when you are offended during a conflict, when negative emotions come to you, and you are angry. It is very important that you do this practice every day as many times as you need. I would say it's a protective ritual. Doing this ritual every evening should become a habit the same as brushing your teeth. We are taught to brush our teeth, to wash our face and body. But unfortunately, we are not taught to take care of our energy body. This is much more serious. My dear, imagine your aura now. Maybe there's already a spirit of trauma in that aura. How can you tell if it is a lineage trauma or not? If you notice that certain situations have been repeated in your lineage for generations. For example, women in your lineage are very touchy or even weepy. They give up in any difficult situation. It means the spirit of trauma has been living in your lineage for generations. Or, you know that everyone in your lineage is short-tempered. You only say a word, and everyone gets hot like fire. There's no stopping. It means the trauma spirit of irritation lives in your lineage, and it is very important to work with it. When you remove the spirit of trauma from within you, things become easier for your lineage because you are not only working with yourself, 
You are working with the whole lineage. My dear, when you determine the depth of this trauma, it is very important to understand and decide. I want to get rid of this spirit of trauma, no matter what. I feel a great pain in my heart when I see that the spirit of trauma has appeared in a woman, and, because of that, she cannot realize her predestination and her talents. The worst thing is that, recently, such hard karmic situations have been happening inside the lineage. When little girls are sexually abused in childhood by their relatives, this is that difficult karmic situation of the lineage which is very important to cleanse and eliminate so that the lineage becomes really strong and prosperous. Be sure that if something wrong happens in your life, there is always a way out. Believe me, I have been practicing and working with these spirits of trauma for 20 years now. I know how to approach every trauma and every spirit, what words to say to it, how to persuade it, and which threatening words to use. I know what these spirits are afraid of, and how they can leave your body and, therefore, your life. Remember your brightest resource state. What was happening in your life when you were happy? Remember. How did you feel? What did you look like? Very good. We are going to return to this state. This state will definitely come back after this protective ritual I'm going to perform with you. Of course. I'd really like each of you to be under energy protection. Since ancient times, these have always been magical amulets for a shaman. At first, they were quite primitive and very simple. It could have been a stone, a tooth, a bone, or a piece of wood inside of which the shaman put the spirit. He negotiated and asked the spirit to protect the owner who would wear it. Gradually, everything was refined. Shamans developed their craft and perfected their skills. They found gems, cut the gems, and made jewelry. Unfortunately, this ancient culture of jewelry and magic amulets became empty. We now see a lot of imitation jewelry, a lot of decorations. When you take them, there's nothing but aesthetic beauty to them. There's no living spirit like in the shamanic amulets of power. It may be a little rock. But this rock, in which the great spirit lives, can protect you in difficult moments. I have a student. She said, I always quarrel with my colleague at work. I don't know what to do anymore. I advised her to obtain a special amulet. It was very small, barely visible. When she came to work, she thought, it's going to be just like before. Do you know what happened? The woman she was in conflict with just bypassed her workplace. It's been six months now. She said, you cannot even imagine it. That woman now greets me, and she even said, do you want me to help you with your work? I'll make your life easier. What do you think was going on? I think a lot of you have already figured it out. The spirit of this amulet kept this woman from coming until her condition changed. It created a miracle. This woman's condition had changed. This amulet didn't just help my student. It also helped another woman who was around her to change her condition and get rid of the spirit of trauma. What a joy it is to be able to travel with you to holy places. For me, it is the biggest holiday of my life when I travel to hold seminars for you. I know for a fact that you're the one we'll be meeting very soon. Not through the TV screener calls and messages. 
but we'll see each other and I'll hold your hands. I'm going to feel how big your heart is. I can see that. But I really want to give you the vibrant energy of holy places. Because places of power amplify that energy. I want to warn you about it. Students often come to me and say, we were in the same place of power where we traveled with you. And it felt strange because it was quite different. We did not feel the energy, we did not feel the power, and we did not see the spirits. What was going on with us? After our trip, we even felt some irritation. We were fighting with each other in the group. You need to know a few rules about visiting places of power. One of the rules is the time of power. A shaman always counts on the time to decide when the strongest rituals have to be performed. We always perform a very strong protective ritual at the places of power. Another important rule is the person of power. You can come to a place of power and feel nothing. You don't know how to properly appeal to the spirits to help you. You don't know which rock or which spirit of tree to turn to. The person of power, the shaman, sees the spirits and turns to them. He tells us at what time, where to go, and what to do. The time of power, the person of power, the place of power, and the knowledge of power. These are the components of success for a very spiritual shamanic journey after which our whole life changes. My dear, I really hope that we will meet during one of those shamanic journeys, where you will be able to discover all your talents, because the place of power enhances the state of a person. If you come to the places of power completely eaten by spirits of trauma, these spirits will grow at this place of power. You will not be cleansed. On the contrary, you will feed all the spirits of trauma with this holy energy. I am not surprised why people come to the places of power and feel even more disconnected. More apathy. More sadness. Meaninglessness and misunderstanding of what happened to them. Maybe they even bring the spirits of trauma from this place. Another student of mine came to me and said, I don't know why, but I want to go to Vietnam. I scanned her. I looked and saw that the spirit of trauma had appeared in her aura. I asked her, Have you been to Vietnam? She said, yes. I went to Vietnam without blessing. That's a lot of pain for a shaman. When you go somewhere without a blessing, we realize what spirits you may encounter there. When you get the blessing, it's the energy that protects you. If you also have a protective amulet, it's powerful. I can see it all. I see the whole situation that's happened to her before my eyes. She came to Vietnam to an abandoned monastery, and she felt a very strong desire to approach some tree. She came up to it, sat down, and started to move her hand on the ground. She saw a little rock and felt an urge to take it with her. She brought the rock with her to Moscow. As soon as she took this rock, she had a very strong energy connection with this place. She began to think of giving up everything, a successful career, her family and children to go to Vietnam to live in this ruined monastery where no one but snakes lives. When she brought and showed me the rock, I saw it wasn't a rock at all. It was a piece of bone. It was a human skeleton bone. 
It was very ancient, and that's when I had a situation before my eyes. I saw an image from the past. Hundreds of years ago, when this monastery was in operation, an novitiate was brought there by force. A young girl of 16. Her parents brought her and left her there. She had severe mental trauma. She was possessed by the spirit of trauma, loneliness, despair, and sadness. She went to the seashore, looked at it, and wanted to die. One day, she threw herself off a cliff. She was buried just under that tree. But, the spirit of trauma could not calm down. It was near. When my student took what she thought was a rock, she took the spirit of trauma with her. When she had energy contact, the spirit of trauma said, come back, come back, return to this place and suffer again. Thank God she came and listened to the shaman. The most important thing is to listen to advice of wise people. I performed a ritual of exorcism of this spirit of trauma for her. She told me after it, my God, what happened to me? I forgot about my children, I forgot about my husband, I forgot about my family and friends. She also said, I want to hug my family right now. Give them my love. I feel as if I haven't seen them in months. How did my loved one suffer? Thank God, it's been two years. This is a beautiful and healthy family. It's a wonderful ending. If it wasn't for the shaman's intervention, this situation would have ended badly. She would have gone to Vietnam, and there, the spirit of trauma would have caused her to commit suicide. And it would have started looking for another victim. My dear, don't think you can handle things yourself. Come to me for help. My mission in this life is to protect women from all dark spirits, to protect them from all the attacks of the spirits of trauma. Now, we will perform the most ancient ritual. It consists of two parts. The first part is purification. The second part is an energetic protection. I am wearing special bracelets for this ritual. Special protective bracelets. I'm going to teach you how to get rid of the negative energy of the spirits of trauma every day. Stand straight. Stand so that your legs are at the width of your shoulders. Your torso is stretching up. Your tailbone is pushing down. Your body is relaxed. Bend your legs slightly at your knees. We're going to take a breath now. As you breathe, your legs begin to shrink gradually. Start clenching the whole body. Contract the muscles. Squeeze your legs. Tighten your calves. A wave or tension gradually covers your whole body. Thighs. Buttocks. Belly chest, arms, and face. Squeeze your aura as tightly as possible. Your body is shrinking, your aura is shrinking. And then, when clenched, freeze for some time. Freeze in this tension and hold it as long as you can. After this phase, exhale sharply and move your hands to the side. It's like you repel from your aura what we've accumulated during the day. Your hands are tense. Then comes a little relaxation. The whole body relaxes. At that moment, after a strong clenching, the negative energy is ejected from the aura. During this moment of relaxation, your aura is relaxed and pure energy from the surrounding space is injected into you. When we get rid of something unnecessary, that place becomes empty. It is very important to fill it with some sublime experiences of fine energy. 
Otherwise, at least three, four, or five spirits may come to this place. It's the same if someone finds out that nobody lives in an empty apartment. There are suddenly a lot of applicants for this apartment. Just like your aura. My dear, try doing it with me. Take a breath. Tense your legs, buttocks, hips, stomach, chest, and arms. Your whole body, your face, everything is tense. You're like a spring. Keep it as tight as possible. Now, exhale and move your hands to the side. Maximum tension and relaxation. Close your eyes. Feel the body pulsating. Feel the pure energy rays pouring into your aura and filling you up now. Very well. Now, try to feel your body. Where do you feel the experience? Maybe it's in your heart. Maybe that fear is in the area of your kidneys. Where do you feel anxiety? That's where the spirit of trauma lives. By concentrating on this area, you can push it out of your aura. Pushing it all out intentionally and making hand movements. If you feel it in your heart, breathe and exhale into the area of your heart. If it is in the stomach area, breathe into the area of your stomach. Get ready, feel it, we do it together. Inhale. Your body is covered with a wave of tension. We're holding the tension at maximum. Breathe out. Maximum tension and relaxation of the body. You can do it as many times as you feel. The most important indicator that you have succeeded in this ritual is that you feel a burst of energy. Your body is getting hot. You have a rising level of energy and power that allows you to prevent these spirits from entering your life. Do it as many times as you need. If, during the day, you feel that you need to be filled with energy or that something is bothering you, find a place where no one will see you. Get some privacy. When you exhale, don't let it be loud, don't do it using your vocal cords. It has to be an impulse from the solar plexus area. It's a very strong flow of energy and air. When you've done this energy cleansing, you and I create a protection sphere. To do that, we move on to the second stage of our ritual. Put your thumb and forefinger together to form an energy mudra of power. Put them together now. Flip your hands over and put them in the area of the sacral women's center. And now, without touching the body, at a distance of 2-3 centimeters, you and I take energy from the sacral women's center. Raise it up. Let us unwrap our hands in the area between the eyebrows. Raise your hand above your head. Sharply turn your hands and put a sphere of protective energy around you. Put your hands in the area of the buttocks in a special mudra, closing the circle of the protective sphere. We will put seven protective spheres on our body. There are six subtle energy bodies besides our physical body. Each body is an embodiment of a certain sphere of our life. Do it with me. Let's protect our physical body, our physical health and immunity. When we lower the protective sphere, we will sing the sacred sound of Om. 
the sound of the creation of the entire universe. In our case, we will create the new universe of our life. Let us create a defense that is impervious to dark spirits together. Let's protect our physical health. Now, we will protect our relationships, our female power, and our relationship with our partner. Take a breath. Now, we'll protect our material plane, our career and our financial situation. The financial position of our family. Activity, leadership skills. Take a breath. Protect the energy of our heart, our love, our compassion, and our heartfelt relationships. Take a breath. We protect our individuality, our talents, and our skills. Take a breath. Feel that there's a will inside you. We are not always able to show it. Let us protect the will that awakens within us. Protect our intuition. Take a breath. Let us protect our connection to the higher powers. The ability to feel God's clues. To be in touch with Him. So that our lineage is constantly under the energy protection of the higher powers, the higher spirits. Close your eyes. Feel now that your body and your aura are starting to pulsate. You can hear the sound of the music of transformation. Protective music which should play during this ritual. Feel your aura becoming dense and strong. Reflecting the influence of your environment. Reflecting the influence of others. Their moods and states. You are under energy protection. Take a deep breath. Exhale, feeling strong confidence and power. Take a deep breath. Open your amazing eyes on the exhale. How do you feel? I'm more than sure that you feel fine. Do this protective ritual every day. It's nice to perform it in the morning and evening to tune into confidence in the morning for a successful day. Let my day be successful. Make these words your motto and let it become a moment of purification and filling before going out in the evening. My dear, I wish you and your family protection. I'll see you soon. It is often difficult for us to cope alone, and it is so important to be in the company of understanding people. In our classes, the masters create a field of love, friendship, and mutual understanding where everyone will feel free and safe. Become a part of the field of love in our trainings and seminars.